Welcome back to part two of our Pershing Square Holdings analysis. In this video, we'll be doing a deep analysis on PSH and deciding whether we feel it is a good investment at the moment. Pershing Square Holdings, ticker symbol PSH, is Bill Ackman's investment fund that trades on the London Stock Exchange. Pershing Square owns a significant stake in blue chip US companies such as Lowe's, Hilton, Starbucks, Chipotle and others. The fund's net asset value is around $8.8 billion as of 30th of September 2020 or $44.7 uh, per share versus a share price of $33.75. It is a closed end fund which means it's a portfolio of pooled assets that raise a fixed amount of capital through an IPO and then list the shares for trade on a stock exchange. This means they have permanent capital rather than your typical hedge fund who invests with their clients' money and earns a management fee. This mitigates the risks that investors' clients will, will pull their money out in times of distress, which would kill the majority of investing approaches, but especially Ackman's long-term hold approach. As Ackman said in his interview we covered in the previous video, he sees Pershing Square as an investment holdings company that owns businesses with great runways for growth ahead and with real equity value, not just another fund. Before we dive deep into PSH, if we're to invest in Bill Ackman's company, let's first look at who Bill Ackman is and what his investment record looks like. Bill Ackman is both celebrated and criticised for his confidence and tenacity when it comes to making big bets on a handful of positions. His all-or-nothing approach has led to some of the greatest, most rewarding calls in the investing world, but also some of the biggest busts. Ackman is considered an activist investor by most due to his traditional strategy being to buy the common stocks of public companies when he thinks they are undervalued and pushes for changes so the market can realise the value of the companies. Some background on Ackman. His first real step into the investment world was when he founded Gotham Partners with fellow Harvard graduate David Berkshwitz. The firm grew from making small investments in public companies to making big bets on shorts and credit default swaps, which both paid off, uh, although not without causing major hassle to the firm in some cases. In 2004, he founded Pershing Square Capital Management with other business partners using their own money. And in 2012, Ackman launched a new closed end fund called Pershing Square Holdings, which raised $3 billion in an IPO on the Euronext stock market. If we look at Ackman's performance versus the S&P 500, we can see that over a 15-16 year period, he has managed to outperform the market. We've got 16.2% uh, for PSH versus 9.2% for the S&P. However, if we just look at and concentrate over the past five years, we can see he significantly underperformed the market for three consecutive years for reasons that we'll cover in the investment bus. However, in 2019 and 2020, this has just got the first half for now, um, have really caused a turnaround for Ackman, achieving 58% uh, and 74% respectively beating the market by some way. He credits his turnaround to an adjustment in the investment philosophy. He claims uh, they made bold moves that strayed from their core principles of investing and that they would not make the same mistake again. And so here are his principles of investing or eight rules for investing, what he needs in a company to now invest in them. And we've got first, simple and predictable businesses. Second, free cash flow generative. Third, dominant market position. Fourth, large barriers to entry. Fifth, high returns on capital. Sixth, limited exposure to non-controllable extrinsic risks. Seven, strong balance sheet where outside capital is not necessary. Eight, excellent management and good governance. And really, it looks similar to you know the Warren Buffett type approach of looking at or looking for uh, quality businesses. He doesn't mention much about prices, to be honest with you. He's more focused on the characteristics of a business. And there's not many businesses uh, in the world, let alone the US, that meet all of these eight requirements. But obviously, what led to these eight rules or principles of investing uh, being so ingrained in Pershing Square was the investment bus that caused poor performance for two to three years straight due to Ackman betting quite heavily on businesses that didn't just not work out, uh, but proved to be a disaster. So first of all, we've got Valiant Pharmaceuticals. He originally entered at around $180 per share. They took an 8.5% stake in the entire company and it was thoroughly smashed following accusations of fraud against Valiant. Valiant battled against a bundle of challenges that led to the deterioration of the stock. 
Although the company lived to tell the tale, it has since changed its name to try and move on from the scandal. In March 2017, Pershing Square sold its entire position after 18 months of trying to save it, realizing a loss of more than $3 billion. And then another more notable investment bust was JC Penney. This was quite a while back now, but still very well known. Ackman was able to invest in JC Penney's stock at around $20 per share after it declined from around $80 per share. The business was going for a very rough patch. He figured the brand could still be salvaged, however, and that its real estate portfolio still had value. Thus, Ackman's Pershing Square took a 16% stake in the company. Ackman managed to gain significant power on the board and appointed a replacement CEO who had ideas to change the company. And cutting a long story short, the changes didn't work out and actually drove customers away. It said the shares sold for around $12 to $13 per share, meaning he lost almost $500 million on the investment. He wasn't alone on betting on the turnaround of JCPenney. Successful investors such as George Soros, Richard Perry and Carl Bass all followed his move. And it just shows that sometimes even the smart money can be wrong and in a very big way. Of course, there is Herbalife as well. I've kept it off of here. Herbalife was obviously an investment flop of Ackman's, uh, but more so to do with the borrowing costs that he had to encounter and the bad publicity that came with it. He shorted the stock and it dropped significantly in the uh, first few months after and then come back up to its previous level. So he didn't make any money on it. And, and really, he did make a loss, but it was more from the borrowing costs. So we've covered uh, PSH's track record. It's essentially Bill Ackman's record. We have also covered the structure of the firm being a closed-end fund with permanent capital. We've looked at Pershing Square's investment philosophy and principles as, again, they are essentially Bill Ackman's. Now let's look within the fund uh, and do some analysis to see what we would essentially be buying if we bought PSH stock. Here is Pershing Square stock portfolio. Now remember, this is just the stock portfolio and doesn't account for any cash or other securities they own. Uh, they made a significant amount of other income off of trade, such as the recent $2 billion of profit made in the 2020 bet against uh, uh, corporate bond rate. There is also the warrants attached to the Pershing Square Tontine SPAC that means shareholders of Pershing Square Holdings. PSH stock will receive 1.5 to maybe 3% of the market cap of the new merged company when taken public. But we'll get into that in a moment. So when we conduct a look through analysis, we start to see where the value is in Pershing Square stock. It's selling at obviously 70% of net asset value, which we already covered uh, whilst measuring against net asset value is deemed risky and not a great measure by some people. If we look at the underlying metrics, it means that PSH is selling at around 21 times uh, current portfolio earnings, which are here, and only 12 times uh, 2021 portfolio projected earnings, which are over here. And that's an earnings yield of 4.6% currently and 8.2% earnings yield in 2021. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 has a PE ratio of 36 times. And the securities individually, they're selling for 30 times. So the holdings themselves individually on the stock market are selling below the market norm. To be honest with you, a forward earnings yield of 8.2% is always a great indicator that the price is going to move up eventually because there's not many places in the market you can find a forward earnings yield of 8.2%. And uh, there's definitely not many places where you can get a current earnings yield of 8.2%. So that's an indicator that if those projections can be reached, the stock price for PSH will likely move up quite significantly. So why is Pershing Square holding stocks selling at such a significant discount to net asset value? Well, apart from the reason uh, Ackman mentioned in the interview we watched about them being listed on the European exchanges and the awareness of the fund not being huge outside of the US and also not being part of the indexes until last month, which prohibited domestic funds from buying its stock. Another reason generally is that closed end funds tend to trade below net asset value, although the margin is usually a lot smaller. Uh, you tend to see around 3 to 5% discount to account for the volatility of the liquid assets that sit behind it, in this case, publicly traded stocks. However, I feel the reasons for the 30% discount to net asset value are more likely to be the patchy five-year performance of the fund, losing money uh, three years in a row due to some bad investments prior to 2018, 2019. 
The portfolio is also highly concentrated, eight and a half billion in just seven stocks. That comes with great results when your picks are right, but a volatile net asset value, as one of the largest stocks can move the needle with a drop in value at any point. One interesting point to consider here is Pershing Square Tontine Holdings, the highly spoke about SPAC that is made up of entirely cash, trades at over 106% of its net asset value. So investors are relying solely on the investor's ability to find a great investment, but yet PSH trades at only 70% of net asset value but is managed by the same investment team and owns sponsor warrants. That means it's a $1 billion forward purchaser of the SPAC common stock with the right to increase to buy an additional $2 billion at any point. At $20 per share, that is. It's already trading at $25 per share with no merger or investment announced. So in the event that Pershing Square Tontine Holdings completes a successful merger, Pershing Square Holdings stock and shareholders will hold a significant stake in the new company and probably achieve a big return on the $20 per share investment. There is also the fact that PSH has a net cash position of $1.7 billion in addition to the large stock portfolio, sponsor warrants and forward purchase commitments. We don't know yet what he is planning to purchase with the SPAC proceeds, but names such as Airbnb were floated originally, um, as well as names like Stripe more recently. Now let's talk about the catalyst for the stock um, and for future growth. I listed some throughout the interview in the previous video, but here they are as well as uh, two additions. So first of all, buybacks. They're buying back hundreds of millions worth of stock, essentially putting their money where their mouth is when they say they think it's undervalued and they're accumulating it as much as they can while the discount and asset value is still around 30%. Secondly, added to the index, in this case, the FTSE 100. And to be honest with you, they are one of, uh, if not the most attractive stocks in the FTSE 100 index. It doesn't have um, a terrible amount of good stocks in the index, I must say. Third, high returns on equity, high returns on shareholder equity that will result in book value growth and will grow shareholder equity at a double digit rate should the high ROE continue. Fourth, New and improved investment strategy likely leading to less volatility, which may over time cause the discount to net asset value to reduce. Fifth, Ackman's ability to make big bets on macroeconomic trends, um, which should provide book value growth um, from getting profits or proceeds from the trades and then reinvesting those into securities to compound gains, which is what we saw in 2020 with the big bet against the market. Uh, and all of those proceeds being reinvested back into the portfolio. Sixth, underlying earnings uh, earnings per share to grow at around 77% in 2021 from an earnings yield of 40 oh sorry, from an earnings yield of 4.6% to 8.2%. It's very unlikely the underlying securities will not move up in value if the projections are anywhere near accurate. Just think 77% EPS growth combined. It's very unlikely that will not move the needle on the market cap of all the companies. And then seven, the warrants to purchase up to $3 billion of the Tontine SPAC merger at $20 per share. As we said, PSTH is already trading at $25. So there's a, a chance to make some very good profit there. So to be honest with you, anyone who was uh, looking to invest in the Tontine SPAC but turns their nose up at a regular PSH stock really should rethink their strategy is although you're not getting full exposure to the Tontine SPAC merger here, you are getting a much better value deal considering it's already trading above $25 per share and you would essentially be getting uh, buying warrants to own it at $20 per share once the merger happens. In summary, is Pershing Square Holdings a good investment? In my opinion, it's hard to argue you're not getting value from investing in PSH stock. There are significant catalysts that will likely lift the stock price in the future, even if the 30% discount to net asset value is not closed. In my opinion, the 30% gap will close, uh, may not close to 100% of net asset value, but it will close the gap somewhat especially given the recent addition to the index. We've already seen it drop to around 27 uh, to 30% over the Christmas New Year period. 
Due to these reasons, I could see it being a long-term winner with book value growing at a rate close to return on equity, say 16 to 20%, and Ackman being able to make big trades that produce lumpy profits to be reinvested into the stock portfolio, which is compounding at its best. If I'm to be more definitive, I would say that Pershing Square should probably trade at or around its net asset value even trailing it, say, 3 to 5%, will probably be more suitable, meaning that it's currently around 25 to 30% undervalued in my eyes. There is, of course, risk involved just because there are catalysts and a slight margin of safety doesn't mean the value of the portfolio can't drop for any reason, therefore reducing PSH's overall value. Or maybe Ackman <laughs> returns to making bold activist moves and produces a horrible investment However, I think he's learned his lesson the hard way and it shouldn't happen again. Also, it is quite a complicated investment considering all the stones you have to turn over in order to analyse the business. You have to really see if it fits your investment principles and investing goals and maybe conduct some more research of your own if you are not sure. But let me know in the comments below what you think of PSH and Bill Ackman. Are you investing in either PSH or PSTH? Or is it a pass altogether for you? If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more analysis and stock market valuations. Let me know in the comments if there are any specific stocks that you want valuing next time. But until next time, good luck with your investments.